Hello y'all, this is the Ninja DC. Sorry I was not able to get the drop on every brony else this week, as a film shoot kept me away from any live viewing. And of all the bucking episodes, it had to be this gem that marks the return of my favorite MLP writer, Cindy Morrow. And yeah, I agree with EQD this time. This is easily the best episode of the season thus far, due in major part to Rainbow Dash's continuing character arc. And this week, the development involves breaking down Rainbow Dash's character through, well, grief, quite literally as it covers all the stages of it. What I mean is, Tanks for the Memories structure is perfectly built around the the stages of grief in a rather natural way. Rambo first starts out by denying Fluttershy and Spike's advice. Then we get that hilarious outburst we had that early preview of. From there we get hit by bargaining, depression, and finally acceptance. Through this we are able to see Rainbow at her weakest, which for writers is usually the best point, as it allows them to rebuild the character. It's good to see Cindy continues to nail Pegasi emotional grief to a freakish degree. See, what makes this breakthrough particularly effective is it plays on Rainbow Dash's big biggest weakness, fear of loneliness. Though many find it impossible, one thing Mysterious Meldorwell did actually very well was to show that the reason why Rem was so showboaty is because of a desperate need to not be alone to be the center stage to not be forgotten sort of thing. This in turn makes sense for Rainbow's character as a whole, as she is the element of loyalty. Not being able to let go should be an issue for her that Rainbow has to learn to overcome, in what is now the best example of persuado death within this series so far. Sorry Golden Oaks, you've been replaced once more. And what makes this particular example so effective as it was with Golden Oaks, is we as an audience have watched this relationship from the very beginning. We are just as invested in Tank as as Rainbow, which makes it extremely easy to empathize with her even when she starts doing, well, rather stupid things in the name of love. This relationship development is not the only good thing about this episode, by far. First off, remember how I kept complaining about the weak songs this season? Yeah, this is how an MOP song is done. It wasn't singing exposition as to what was happening on screen, but singing raw emotion and having a montage of somewhat related concepts in the background. The song really showed how desperate Rainbow was to keep Tank and did not simply tell us. I love the world building in this episode as well, as we get to see the inner workings of the Cloudsdale's less bloody rainbow factory. And it was simply awesome cloud punk. Also, I was glad to see Cindy's knack for Fluttershy overpowered M.L. Larson's influence in a rather nice portrayal of her character that herself showed growth from previous seasons with tough love. As for negatives, there were a few. The main one that came to mind was Flutter's having to explain hibernation to Dash. She already knows what it is, as was made very clear by the first winter wrap-up episode. I wish they would have played up more, she simply didn't know Tank needed it, too. Heck, it was a golden opportunity to work in some turtle and tortoise jokes again. Come on, it writes itself. But alas, I admit this is nitpicking in an otherwise great episode. So yeah, I find this the best episode in the season thus far, as it has a nice balance of humor, references, feels, and an interesting narrative structure based on grief. Not to mention it continues Rainbow Dash's lovely developmental arc. Well, this is the Ninja DC. Keep calm and an open mind. Place has unlimited breadsticks. Don't be rude. Hmm. So tell me, how did you two meet? <coughs> what is it that you two do for a living, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Universe? Where have I heard those voices before? Oh my gosh. Hey, Saito! Work over that weapon now! Your turn, police girl. 